think you can hear. My name is Marcus, and my role in Safaricom Live is to be a good performer and just kill the shows. True. My name is Karen. I'm the female vocalist of Kamula, and that's what I do. My name is Shopperman, and I am a rapper in Kamula. That's where I'm at. My name is uh, Teo Tripper, DMC, and I own the place. Play. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also a rapper in Kamula, representing the 2 5 float. The experience for me has been, it's been educational. It's been educational. I feel like I took an educational tour around the country, my country, doing what I love. So. You better bring somebody to the club to, to, to the club Cause tonight, tonight We calling everybody so get up Alright This party don't stop Don't stop This party don't stop It goes on Why did the party have to stop? Now, for those of you young or old enough to have been in tune with pop culture in the early 2010s, you can remember Camp Mula was running the town. I remember the first time I heard Party Don't Stop. I was on my way to school and it played on the radio, probably Kiss 100. I wanted it replayed, almost demanded it, even though it was radio. It was different, in a good way. Now, it's not like there was no good music in Kenya at the time. There was. It just wasn't Camp Mula. Over the next few months and years, the group continued to give us that Beethoven. And then one day, in the middle of the night, CM just disappeared. Almost never to be heard of again, well at least as a group. But that triggered me because uh, for the first time I was really just alone, you know, by myself at home and I felt like, oh my goodness, so now Kamula is gone, uh, Cosmic Homies is and gone. Then I had to just face myself mm. fully. And I hadn't invested uh, that much time in my family either I during the, the, the fame, the hype. Point, you know, I was kind of, I was going out there to prove that, you see, I, I have something, you know, like I have something. I was very proud about that. It's now been almost a decade since the group split up. To this day, fans still wonder, what was the ceiling? How far could they have gone? How many accolades would they have won if they stuck together? Very few artists come along and are able to exert their influence on a culture. Many try but fail. When it comes to Camula, it's as if they were not even trying to, but for some reason, their appeal was not insignificant to say the least. The influence they had on urban fashion at the time was undeniable. In this case, it was Vazi, snapbacks, and African clothing accessories. If you were fashionable during those times, that was part of your wardrobe. The music itself was unique. The folks at Sub-Saharan Records had come up with a sound to complement the type of group Camula was. It was melodic and easy on the ear. Miss Karoon always delivered on the hooks, with the guys doing the verses. They were at times criticized for doing bubblegum music. But let's be honest, very few people would have listened to them if they tried to be an old school boom bap hip hop group. We had poor era for that. And also here locally, we had groups like Kuteflon, 
who are more concerned with the lyrical aspect. What I'm again is the yells will be the Ellis for real. Taking the game over by storm. Hungry for competition, so you better be one. And let it be known, the boys taking shots to the throne. Till I belong on top of the throne. Y'all need to stop with the throwing of stones on the glass of my home. I'm bad to the bone, that means when I'm rapping the song, so feed me a song. I kill it and I leave it alone for people to mourn. Cause evil was born inside of me. Now, this is not to say that the individual members were not good lyricists. I think they were. Shapa and Teo did some ciphers dubbed 2 5 Flow, and I actually quite enjoyed each of their verses. And more of their lyrical side can be heard on their solo projects. But as a group, they seem to be more interested in making good music, which they happen to be very good at. Within just a few years, they became the first Kenyan artists to be nominated for a BET award. That was a big deal at the time, folks. Kenyan music was getting recognition outside our borders. Their appeal, especially among young urban people across Africa, was pretty evident. As can be seen in interviews they had on places like Channel O and performances outside Kenya and other African countries. I'm trying to push a name. Uh, we, got, we got a blessing from above when Karen decided to join this little family of ours. You know, so we've been working together ever since. They were becoming the undisputed cool kids of the African music scene. A question that often comes up when discussing Kamula is how far would they have gone if they stuck together for let's say even five more years. When you look at the span of time they performed as a group, it could not have been more than three years. And it seems like it was Veni Vidi Vici, and then they left. The problem with trying to scale their potential growth and even popularity is that Kamula wasn't perceived so much as a local Kenyan group, but more of an African urban group. For a majority of Kenyans, Kamula was introduced to them by Nigerian and South African music channels, meaning they were first accepted and popularized outside our borders before we even heard of them. That is why this is such an interesting group to listen to and even debate on what their true potential was. I think this is a discussion worth having. When was the first time you listened to Kamula, and what memories do you have of the group? How big do you think they would be if they were still together? Why don't you share your thoughts in the comments section? Thanks for watching.